Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the incredible, the vivacious, the electric lady, yeah. Janelle Monet. So glad that you are here with us uh, this afternoon as, as you gear up for the release of your latest project, Dirty Computer. I like the sound of that. I was like, I'm wondering what's on her hard, what's on Cindy's hard drive that makes it so dirty? I was like, dirty? Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait till April 27th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so uh, with this project, um, there are going to be visuals on them because I've, I've seen all four videos. Uh, Make Me Feel, uh, Django Jane, Pink, um, and you just released I Like It. Uh, I, like, like, I Like That, excuse me. I Like That. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I, I, I love how vulnerable you are in that song because like how you admit to um, when you were in school when you were younger how someone calls you weird and then when you cut off your perm and like I feel like a lot of who we are happens when we're young and I also feel like you've always been sure of yourself. Were you like that when you were younger? Mm -mm. No? No, I wasn't. Um, I think that, that song, you're, you're speaking to, to the lyrics and I like that. It, it absolutely came from a place where I was unsure of myself and I was kind of trying to find myself. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I used to, you know, growing up, my mom put a relaxer on my hair because it was just too much for her to comb because it was so thick. And <laughs> it was just too much. She was working too many jobs and she was just like, girl, get that PCJ. <laughs> that, that was my life. I was a PCJ girl. Uh, and no, nothing wrong with that. I think when I got old enough to kind of make my own decisions, I wanted to know what my own hair looked like. I wanted to, uh, I was into Lauren Hill and Erica Badu and like hugely inspired by them. And um, I was just in a transition in those stage. And so I went to Sam's Club and this white man cut my hair. It was, it was a mess, it was really a mess. But I wanted to cut my relaxer off, and I didn't want my mom to know, and I did it. And I went through that, you know that stage, if you have natural, natural hair, you know what I'm talking about, where it's like a small afro, and then it's like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that small afro that was trying to grow stage, um, I just remember guys looking at me differently. It was just like a different thing. And then I was also doing a lot of vintage shopping. Not a lot of people at my school was doing that, but it really came out of the fact that I just could not afford like all the latest things, you know? And you go to the thrift store, you get you a $2 sweater and nobody has it. It just made me feel like, okay, um, I'm kind of cultivating my style, I'm experimenting. But it wasn't always met with positive responses. And you know, when you feel like that, like high school can be stressful. Yeah. You know, it can be really stressful, and so I think that song um, is a real experience for me, but not just me, for a lot of women, where men in particular um, <laughs> can put pressure on us to feel like we can't define beauty on our own terms. Mm. And I'm just here to say that that's absolutely not true. Um, it may come with you know, a little uncomfortability, or you may be uncomfortable, but that song is about embracing the things that make you unique, even if it makes others uncomfortable. Very this, this work is coming from, um, you know, we all talk about like fearless, and I want to be fearless. I don't think I was really being fearless. I think it was like something I, of, you know, choosing freedom over fear, and what that really means is like you have to actively choose freedom like it'll come with scrutiny you might lose some people some people may you know say I don't understand her this time or I don't understand you I'm jumping off ship I don't got time for that you know this is you represent this to me continue to represent that to me and I think this is the era of saying no and and you know of evolution and um, actively choosing um, freedom over fear because it ain't free and and I think that I feel inspired to have had, you know, lots of people um, in my life who've been very, you know, supportive. And 
I would stay up, like when I released Make Me Feel and when I released Django Jane, I was so concerned. I was like, oh my God, what are people going to say? What are they going to think? And um, it was fine. Like, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in that space now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still scared. The album hasn't come out. The vi- all the visuals haven't come out. Um, so I, I, I don't know, but I, I resist worrying. I'm going to resist that. You just said all the visuals. So, so are we having like a, um, it's going to be like a discography, like a videography with the, all the songs are going to have videos? Well, I think, I mean, some people will call it a short film. They'll call it a, uh, a narrative-driven film. Some people will say a visual album, but I call it an emotion picture um, because it, it comes from here. It comes from my heart, my emotions. Emotion. And it's, it's, a, yeah, it's a little playoff motion picture. Yeah, I got it. Um, I get it. Yeah, we worked hard on it. Since my first, before my first album, I, I wanted to do this, but I don't think, well, one, nobody, uh, yeah, I just, I hadn't had a song out yet, and so being able to partner with people and have people help you do that financially. Um, it was just a struggle back then, but now, you know, we did what we what we could. We worked hard. I worked with a lot of people who believed in, 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 in my story and the concept of Dirty Computer. Um, and I just hope, I hope people see the love in it and I hope that they see themselves in it. I hope that they feel, feel seen and feel heard. Okay, so I have a question from Fire, but in parentheses, Fire. Right, baby. Okay, yeah. okay. Yes, baby. baby from New Orleans, baby. Yes, baby. <laughs> How did you maintain and retain a hairstyle, which is now iconic for so long, and did you feel like it made you stuck or successful? Mm, well, I'm looking at your hair. You been, how long you been had that hairstyle? Because um, it's, it's nice. To tell you the truth, I'm a comic and I'm the only female beatboxer in this area. So I beatbox with Jill Scott, Erica Badu, Roxanne oh, Shantae. Yeah. And I always thought that hair was something that was ours. And I stayed with the same hairstyle. Some of the people in here know me. I've only had three hairstyles in 20 years. Wow. And um, I just really think that that's ours. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to buy expensive clothes. I don't have to buy expensive cars. But I felt like that was something marketing-wise I can do for me. Yeah. And so I always wanted to ask you that because your style is iconic, and a lot of us black women feel like in entertainment we change so much that people don't recognize us. Mm. And mm. so I've always, and because of my fiance, you know, she won the tickets. She's a huge fan, but I've said it's hard. And I look at you, music, I love you, but for your hair and you staying consistent, I love you even more because I did the same thing. Yeah, well, I love you too. Uh-huh. Thank you for expressing that. That's, that touches my heart. Uh, I think you hit on something that, you know, absolutely, uh, it's something you have to ask yourself as an artist. Um, we also live in a world where people want to see different looks and they want to see you do this and they're like, they want to live vicariously through you. Um, I resisted that. I still do, kind of. But I think early on I I felt like I had a responsibility to redefine what it meant to be a young black artist, a a, a woman artist, a female artist um, in society. I think that, you know, I I would go into these photo shoots and these stylists would shove certain outfits in my face and would be like, well, this is, you know, this is the look. You know, you you do R&B and this is what you need to look like. And they, people have tried to pigeonhole hold me and I love the box, but I'm not interested in being in it. I'm interested in putting the box on my head, <laughs> sitting in it, turning it upside down, you know? And it took a lot. A lot of people um, didn't get it and what I, what I like to call my uniform was something that I think you guys saw for years, for years and years. And I still, it's just remixed, you know, black and white to honor my, my, my working class family, my mom and my dad. My mom was a janitor, my dad was a sanitation worker. Um, my stepdad, who's just like my dad, worked at the post office. My grandmother served food at the county jail for 25 years. She picked cotton in Aberdeen, Mississippi. I come from a very service-oriented family. And so for me, it was personal to wear black and white. It was like, I'm honoring my family. I'm honoring those who sacrificed so much for me. 
you know, I wouldn't be here if it was not um, for their love and their dedication um, to making sure I was good. And that's why I wore black and white. That's why I had my uniform. I also could not afford to switch clothes every single day. I started off doing my own hair, my own makeup, you know, so that was the hairstyle as a natural hair girl that worked for me. You know, I just had to do what I did, and I think it just became this thing, and people, you know, didn't know if it was manufactured or who did it, or but it came from not having a lot, coming from parents who didn't have a lot. It came from to mean something deeper um, uh, to me than most people would think. I think, though, it was never about... Um, I still found freedom in that. I mean, I, you know... I'm, you know, I'm here, and I've just wore two colors for literally my entire my entire career. You know, so I mean, I like to think that there was success in sharing something that was um, that was uh, that meant so much to me with the rest of the world. And even if it took some time for me to get to where I am, I wouldn't change a thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's another question from the audience. Uh, Valencia Thomas. Thomas. Uh, so you have it? Hey. Valencia Thompson. Thompson. Oh, yeah. excuse me, Valencia. <laughs> she wants to know. Uh, the, you obviously take a lot of influence from Prince. Who else do you draw inspiration from? Yeah, I love Prince. He was a mentor of mine. Um, I've toured with him. He was on my last album, The Electric Lady. Um, I miss him. You know, I really, really do miss him, and I try to honor him whenever I can, because without him, I don't think I would know how far I could go, you know? Um, he opened up many doors for not just, you know, me, but many artists. I love Janet Jackson. I think when I heard the Velvet Rope album, I felt like after Control and then, like, everything she had done, Janet and then... Um, when she did Velvet Rope, that was like the first black woman that, that on a pop level that really did go outside of the of, of what was normal for black artists at that time to do. Like she spoke about sexuality, she spoke about um, so many different things, you know, and she was very successful. Domestic and violence. Domestic violence. She stood up for those, you know, who were, were who had died for AIDS, uh, died died due to AIDS. Like she was just like an activist all around. Michael Jackson, obviously. Um, I remember singing my, Michael Jackson songs in church and getting kicked out of. The, <laughs> Wait a minute. The, Wait a minute. I, yes. In church. Yes. Don't tell me in the my, middle of the sermon. Yes. No, in didn't. the middle of the sermon, Patrick, uh, Pastor, full out preaching, and I hear a moment of silence, and I just like just be there, <laughs> and got escorted to the children's church. Yes. My auntie would tell you this, so I was a huge Michael Jackson fan. So you definitely always uh, walked to the uh, Beat of Your Drum. Right? You said what? Wait, did I just say that? Yeah, you said it right. Yeah, you, you always, always walked walk to, to the Beat of Your Own Drum. I guess. I don't know. I was just, maybe that was that was who I was trying to worship. Michael Jackson, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like Lauren Hill, obviously, the way she speaks about her religious beliefs, the way she just redefined what it was to be black, do hip-hop, do acting, do everything. I mean... Um, David Bowie, uh, I can go on and on. Yeah. I, I saw that you posted uh, the picture of Beyonce from Saturday. And Beyonce. And, and your, the I caption that her. you had. Oh my goodness, come on, man. That was an incredible, like, that show was so freaking incredible, man. As, as a black woman, her being the first black woman to headline Coachella is a crime, first of all. But they could not have picked a better better person. I felt like that was for that was for all the black girl magic. Like, period. That was something that made me feel proud to be an artist and to be a black woman. Yeah, it was magical. And it Absolutely. also, like, for me, like, personally, I don't know anybody else that way, it made me take a look at myself as well, right? So, Beyonce has this huge platform, and this is what she's doing. It's like, okay, well, what are you doing every single day with your platform? At the same 24-me. You know? So, right. And I, it, did make me, it made me look at myself like, okay, check yourself real quick, you know? Yeah, like she works hard. Yeah, man, she mm -hmm. works hard. It's not just, you know, her talent, but yeah. her work ethic. She just yeah. outworks people. Mm -hmm. And she's 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 done that for 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 years, and I think that's inspiring. It just makes you want to say that hey, 
Listen, she's setting us up. Let's continue to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's continue to be great. Let's continue to show black excellence. Yes. Trina wants to know where is Cindy Mayweather. We we need answers. Where is Trina? Exclamation point. Mayweather. (laughs) (laughs) I knew it was you. Uh, (laughs) Cindy Mayweather is amazing. She is. And it will continue. Um, Don't know when, but some exciting things in development for her. Um, She's speaking for those of you who may not know what she's talking about. Uh, When I first started, I released an EP called Metropolis, and then I did the Arc Android, and then I did the Electric Lady, and it was inspired by um, an android. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd, I love science fiction, yes, I'm black, I love it all. (laughs) We can can love everything. Um, But anyway, I used Cindy Mayweather, this android that represents the new other. And when you think about the other as it pertains to now, you could think about black people, you can think about people in the LGBTQIA community, you can think about those in um, poor class, those are just a few groups, but I used her as an example to show um, to show what these groups, our groups are going through, you know, those that are marginalized. And I wanted to talk about it in the future because I feel like through science fiction, things can make a lot of sense. Like if you take it out of present day and you put it in the future, for me, when I watch TV shows and things, I'm like, we're going through that now. Oh, we're going to be doomed if we don't get <laughs> if we don't get it together. So I just thought it was a, a interesting way to do it, and 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 I I told it through her lens. Um, but I had this idea of dirty computer before the Arc Android, and it was just important for me to get it out right now. So Cindy is cool with it. She's fine. She's still gonna. She's still. She's from 2719. She's gonna always be. <laughs> Um, Michael is asked, he said, uh, Moonlight was your acting debut on film. How important was it playing the role of Teresa? And where do you think Chiron is today? Mm. Wow, well, first I, I want to start off by saying that, you know, I'm so honored to have been a part of history. Yes. Um, to have been a part of a, a film like Moonlight. When I read the script, I've been sent, you know, a lot, a lot of different scripts, but that one, I knew, I said, this has, I have to be a part of this. This has to be my debut. When I read that script, I remember being on the plane, just in tears with my blanket over my head, crying because I had never read a story as beautiful as Moonlight. You have to read the script. The film is beautiful. The the script reading that touched me in such a way. All I could think about was all the young, queer, young kids, you know, uh, bl- you know, black kids in particular, girls, boys who older struggle. too, who are struggling with their identity and and feel like um, they're not seen, they're not heard. And for me, all I could think about when I was with Teresa was showing an example of how you support someone who is going through um, trying to figure out their sexual identity. Sometimes it's not about anything other than listening. And I think that's what I, I, I tried to do with Teresa, yes. was just to make sure she was a good, a person who listened, you know? Because every hood got a Teresa. Every hood saw it, has I a Teresa. Like, oh. I have a Teresa in my life. I had older cousins that I felt like I could talk to when I couldn't speak to my mom, yeah. when I felt like she's just not getting it, she's not seeing me right now. I, I had older uh, women cousins um, who, I could, who I could talk to, and I had aunts. Um, and I just think that's so important that we, we just are there to listen sometimes, not always judge, not always try to, you know, project, but just listen. Yes, listen. Yeah, and so I, I think I think there are Teresa's all over the world, and I was happy to play one of them. Trotty, is that right? Am, am I saying this name? Right? Okay. How have you turned your negative mistakes, hindrances, or issues into positives? I still feel like they're negative, and they're going to always be with me. No. Uh, <laughs> I was like, and <laughs> how have I turned them into positive? That girl good. She good. That girl good. I mean, I think like a lot of lot of us, I hold on to things. I'm like, oh, I just wish that that was just better, or if I didn't do that, or I did not do that. And you spend so much time in the past, and you miss the present, and 
You don't even get to the future. You don't get to show up for yourself in the future because you're so stuck in the past. It's a waste of time. It is nothing you can do except for make a better decision next time. If given the opportunity or if given the, the chance to make another decision, choose the decision that you would have wanted to choose. Um, I think that our mistakes also help us become better people and we empathize more with other people who make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might forgive faster because I've made mistakes. I don't know if that was the answer you were looking for, but yeah. Here's one from, uh, is this Damon? Diamond. Diamond, oh, that's it. Okay, hey, Diamond, how you doing? Okay, she wants to know, um, what made you decide that this is what you want to do? What made me decide this is what I want to do? Hmm, I feel like we all have a purpose, and sometimes it takes some of us just longer to figure it out. Um, it's n neither, you know, the, it's no race because everybody has a unique purpose. I really do believe that. And so I think for me, as I was trying to figure out what my purpose was at a young age, a support system was important. Like my parents, as hard as they worked, they did not get the opportunity to go to college and, and do further their education and just go beyond like Kansas City. Um, they never told me that I cannot be an artist or you need to go do this because we didn't do that so we want you to do that. And I understand why certain parents may say that because it's out of love. It's like you want, you don't, you don't want your child to think that you know, being an artist is it's going to happen overnight and so you may, maybe they might not have what it takes. Who knows? It could just be out of love and out of fear and just making sure that they're going to be taken care of. But nothing is ever, to me, nothing is ever um, confirmed to, to always be. And so if you're going to take a risk, in my opinion, take a risk on doing something that you love that when you are tired and people are getting on your damn nerves, you're getting up and doing it because you love it. You know that there is a responsibility, like you have a unique purpose. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. You do it like your life depended on it because if you didn't do it, you don't have anything else to fall back on. And I think that that support system of having my family at an early age drive me back and forth to talent shows, um, help me pick out my costumes, um, help me get instrumentals for the songs I was going to perform, um, give me, you know, help me find a job when it was time to go study performing arts in New York. All of that helped me realize that this is what I'm supposed to do because the people that love and care about me never told me I couldn't. So that kind of helped me stay there. Like I didn't get off focus from what I felt like my purpose was. Sometimes life can, can distract us and we, we're not set up, you know what I'm saying, in a way that we know this is clear, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. Yeah. Let's take it back to the beginning. Uh, I remember when I first saw you, uh, Horace Brown video that had to do with uh, um, yeah. Outcast and Idle Wild. Um, what was it like? How, how did you um, end up linking up with them? And how, how did all of that come about? How did your career start? Hmm. Well, um, it started with uh, me getting fired from Office Depot <laughs> when I moved to Atlanta. And why did you get fired? Responding to, uh, I think I had about three fans at that time. I was responding to one of them on the company's computer. <laughs> I mean, they had like 20 display computers. Was it MySpace days? Yes. Okay. But I had my own website. Okay. I was, I was doing a little something. Yeah. I had an official website. You could buy your CDs from there. You could look at my tour dates. I was just performing on the library steps of Club Woody in the AUC. More, Morehouse, shout out to Spellman, shout out to Moore is Brown, shout out to Clark. And I was living on Parson Street, living in a boarding house with six other girls. 
and uh, I would just give these dorm lounge performances and library step performances. And I was just really trying to see if people would like what it was that I had to say. I didn't want to go home because I left school. Um, I left uh, New York because uh, I knew I didn't want to do musical theater. Uh, I just, and I didn't feel like there were any, there were not a lot of roles for black women. I mean, unless the Wiz came back. <laughs> I don't know when that was going to be, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, okay, this is my future. The Wiz is all. I mean, I could see that for about 10 years. Like, what's going to happen? Um, and I love the Wiz, so no disrespect. Um, but I wanted to tell new stories. I, had, I felt like I had something to offer as a writer. And during that time of me transitioning, getting fired, and all those things, I had no more excuses. I couldn't say, oh, I can't go to the studio today because I'm working from 9 to 1 to yeah. 9 p.m. Oh, you know, the job wants me to work. Like, I just did not have any more excuses. So, therefore, I was fully committed. Um, I was living with uh, a friend, and I went to an open mic night at Justin's, Puffy's oh, Restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah. When it it's used not, to be open. It's not Justin's any, anymore, yeah. yeah, when it was open. And Big Boy was in the audience. He was there, and I think I sang, uh, Killing me softly with his song. Killing me softly with his song. Telling my whole life with his words. Killing me softly with his song. Uh, <laughs> I sang that song and he was there and the rest was history man I, I wrote a song about getting fired called Letting Go and he put it on his compilation CD it was when he had Purple Ribbon and then they did Idlewild and then I got to do a song on there and I worked with Andre and I worked with both of them and they have been like big brothers you know to me and and um, Big Boy really did put me on, so shout out to Big Boy from Outcast. No doubt. Yeah. And then you talked about uh, Justin's Puff restaurant. I remember seeing you for the first time in Hollywood. I think Puff had like a showcase, like it was showcasing Janelle Monet. I can't remember, but it was a long yeah, time ago. It was R&B Live. Yeah, it's, I think it might have been R&B yeah, Live. And I remember was. seeing you perform, and I was like, yo, she's different, but just like a breath of fresh air, because it's not the same thing that we're seeing again. And then you just, whew. I, was, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. I did not sleep the night before. Like, I woke up crying because it was my first time yeah. ever performing outside of Atlanta. Yeah, and I remember that. If y'all have ever, I mean, Puff is an amazing, like, person and also promoter. And just imagine him telling you, like, so you got you got when you go when I'm bringing you to, you, you to New York. Like, don't you let me down. Like, you know, show them what I saw. And it was just like so much pressure on me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, and I knew, you know, I didn't, I knew that, I knew that my performance style was just different from everybody else's. It wasn't, I didn't think that I was better or anything. It was just like, I don't know. I, I don't think people are gonna like this. This might be too much. Or what are they gonna say? I was just so concerned. This was like the beginning of my career. And I, they, he told me all these people were going to be in the audience, so that freaked me out. And I'm just like, why are you telling me this? Just shut up. I'm just let me do my thing. And so I, I had to go to a whole nother dimension yeah. that night. And you know who was there that made me feel really good? Because I went, I just went. I was like, I'm gonna get on tables. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just make wow. this. If they say I'm crazy, it's gonna be the craziest I shit they this. ever saw. I'm going. I'm just gonna go crazy. Just don't even, don't try to fit in, just go crazy. Because what are they going to do? What, what, what? So, be entertained. Exactly. So, um, I walked off stage, though, really concerned. I was like, oh my God. And, but I got a standing ovation, I remember that. But Missy Elliott was in the audience. Oh. It was like a lot of important people there. I remember that, that night. It was a lot of important people because you invited a bunch of radio people and like yes. so many people in the industry. And it was your first night. I remember them saying it was your first night performing. Um, like that, it but you, you killed it. But it killed was it. deeply stressful. Yeah. Um, but Missy Elliott was in the audience, and I will never forget. She came up to me afterwards, and she was like, "Yo, like, you know, you have something really special." And it was, I like, I'm, 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 I'm inspired. I cannot wait to see what, what you do. And just that little bit was enough 
right. to say, okay, mm -hmm. I love Miss Elliot, I respect her. I don't think she bullshit me right now. <laughs> the fact that she told me that made me walk with my head up higher. It was just like, so what? I don't look like everybody else. So what? You know, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just not. I'm not meant. That's not my purpose. I'm not meant to do that. That's when I. That's when I felt like it was clear. Yeah, that I was. I was just meant to be with a fun. I, whatever it was, I was. <laughs> Whatever it was, I don't so know. So with you having that theater background and now, you know, you've, you've got some movies under your belt and then you, you've got a new movie coming out, The Women of uh, Morrowind. Um, not saying that you had to choose, which one are you enjoying uh, the most? Because I'm sure there's different, you know, you can be somebody else when you're acting, you know. You're you, you're letting some things out, it's kind of, you know, cathartic with the music. Mm -hmm. But um, it, is there a favorite? Uh, no, you know, I grew up doing both. You know, like even my mom, when I was just doing music, she would always be like, well, where is the movie? To the point where she called my agent one day and was like, um, where are the scripts? <laughs> because she grew up seeing me do both. And so it was like something was missing for her. Okay. Um, but I just grew up always, you know, I never had, to, never had to choose. I think you can do both. It's both art. But I will say this, there is a difference for me. Like there's less pressure when I do movies. I feel like I'm, I don't feel like a lot of pressure when I'm doing it because I'm I'm a part of an ensemble. Right. It's a cast, like yeah. it's not all about me. You know, it, it, it's, I'm playing a character, character, I'm doing the best thing for that character. I'm doing the best thing for Mary Jackson, the best thing for Teresa, like the best thing for, for, the, for the film, for the overall project. Um, with your album, it's all you. Yeah. Like down to the bass that's on the album to the mixing, to the mastering, to the visuals, to the singing, to the performing, to the outfits, uh, to the song titles, to the liner notes, like all of it is you. When you do interviews, Janelle Monet said this, this is how she feels. You know, and, it's, and because when I'm, when I'm writing an album, it comes from a very honest and pure place, especially with this album, because I, I think this, this album deals more, you know, not Cindy Mayweather, but it deals more with, with Janelle, you know, Monet, um, me, and it's just like, when you get a criticism, it's like, um, which we all need, and I, I welcome it, I love it, um, it can, it can, it can hurt in a different way, because it's like, well, I'm just being my, you know, I'm just being me, this is who I am, um, but my skin is, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, but it is a lot of pressure to put out an album versus being a movie because again, you can't hide behind it. You can't really hide. It's like, this is how she feels. This is what she performed like. This is how she sounded on that TV show. You know what I'm saying? So, you talked about um, inviting in, you know, the right type of criticism. Do you do you look at your comments and stuff like that? Every every now and again, yeah. but, but not a lot. Um, no, I, I don't. Because that energy sometimes is a lot to <laughs> It could be a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, people will send me, like, positive things or whatever. And, you know, if if something um, is, like, wrong, obviously I'll get, yeah. like, be like, hey, you know, um, this was said, maybe we should address this. But um, I think I'm also in a place in my life, like, this isn't my first album. Mm -hmm. It feels like my first album because it's like the first time that I feel like people are really getting to meet me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, it really I feel like I'm just getting started because I, you know, it was all Cindy. Made. My yeah. first projects yeah. were my subject was not me. Like you could feel me in it, but I don't think it was. It wasn't a hundred percent based off my own life experiences. Like I really was, like I was like I'm doing a concept album. I love Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars from David Bowie. If he can do that, I can do something like that too. You know, I was inspired by that album and I think this time it centers more so around me so it's kind of like for the first time I'm like, hi, I'm Janelle. Yeah, because of the new singles, um, musically, they move, they, like you've got transitions like I'm like man okay she's chilling out now she's got us you know crunk now we jumping like there's there's a lot of different moving parts in the in the songs that I heard which uh, direction were you uh, aiming for with uh, directing this because I, I mean honesty. I personally I like it I mean honesty. I, I think it's dope honesty and honestly we are so many things yeah. that's the thing man we're not monolithic 
as black artists, we're not, I mean, the spectrum is, I mean, we are an array. Yeah. And, and inside, I feel like I have uh, a lot of different sides of me. Um, I don't know about y'all. If y'all got different sides of y'all, but I got different sides of me, and I, I, I don't ever want to feel like I can't be all of me. I think this album was about getting across that I'm a complex, complicated as human being. As we all are. And I don't have all the answers. I don't know why I wanted to do certain things. It just felt good, and I wanted to do it. And um, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with being misunderstood. That's what's up. When you talk about being like open with this album, were there some things that you were, may have been writing? You were like, "That's too much." Like, uh, they don't need to know all that. You think I'm gonna tell you that? Like, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I am. A na I'm naturally a self editor. Yeah. I remember walking out of sessions, being like, "I'm not talking about that." And then, you know, you just have to have people hold you accountable yeah. and be like, "All right, you said you want. You know, you've been putting this album off." For how many albums, you know, you said you really wanted to do it. This is what it's, you know, it's going to take. And then I had a therapist, or I do have a therapist. Um, it was very helpful to just get out everything and then be like, okay, I'm comfortable with, with doing this. I think the one, one thing that, 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 that I think artists, and I'm not the only one who does this, but you got to move at your own time. You know, I don't, I don't move about around things when it's like a demand for people to know certain things or be involved or invested in my private life or whatever it is. It's like I move when I feel comfortable, when I feel uh, emotionally prepared, when, you know, yeah, when I feel my inner compass is leading me to go there and, and my soul clock is telling me, like, okay, cool, you can handle this. Go out there and just be a free ass motherfucker because you got this. And I don't think I was always there. I think I was trying to get there. I don't think I was there. And I might not even be there now, but that's my journey. I'm on the journey to get there. I'm going to ask Janelle my signature question. I wish we were inside the quiet storm because we've been talking. Your voice definitely. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got one right here. Before, radio personality, like y'all voices are just amazing to me. Thank you. I love it. Oh, well, if you yes. ever need an interlude Shout on the next to my, album, you know to, I'm available. To my friend and like a musical fucking beast, yes. Robert Glasper. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. I'm honored that you're here. What a pleasant surprise. Isn't it though? Uh, you had a question. <laughs> oh my goodness! I would be honored for you to be on my next album. I want to do something with you. Yeah. We need to talk for real, for real. Yeah. 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 You're in first. Go ahead. I have a question. Yes. Um, when you hear the word time, that just has that sound form, what does it, what is it, what, how does it move you? What does it mean to you? What does the word time mean to me? Well, I am a time traveler. Mm -hmm. And I think about being timeless. Mm -hmm. And I think about knowing that this place on earth for me is not my last destination. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a construct. I think it, you know, out of respect, I show up on time because it's an agreement. I believe in agreements. But I think it's all made up. And I think that time doesn't exist unless we say it exists. I don't exist unless you say I exist. And you exist to us because we here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for showing up for me, honey. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, do you need a female beatbox? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bear All right. Right. <laughs> you want to show, show, show? Go ahead. Show Come on, now. Baby. Come on, baby. Just for me to be a black woman beatboxing yeah. and to have the accolades I have, not for the comedy that I do, because I'm a comedian, been on Comic View. But I have lived my dreams through beatboxing. And for me to be up here, I, when I beatboxed with Roxanne Shante and had DJ Spinderella, my lips was like, is she see who the fuck is on the stage? <laughs> I almost died for me to be right here. And you know what? I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for my fiance because she won the tickets. But 
I love when people just do they, they, they passions. Yeah. And when my mom, and no disrespect to my mom, my mom started smoking crack at 12, when I was 12 years old. Beatboxing was the only thing that soothed me. And for me to just be right here next to this young lady and that voice and you, just off of beatboxing, yeah. baby, we ain't got to do no more. Oh, because baby. it's like that's love. That's it's love. so much love. That's because love. Hip hop saved my life, and my lips is yeah. platinum, baby. My hey. mine, mine too. Hey. Well, so, that's amazing, man. I was just really enamored. I was like listening, you know, trying to like mm -hmm. stay focused and listen, and, and I just oh, baby, I just when the level's that. right, I, I do a, a number. <laughs> well, go ahead. You got. You need to have somebody doing it with you, though. Well, no, no, no. It? You know, you have to tweak the because it's on a oh, bunch okay. of mids and yeah. and, and highs. Yeah. So I like to get in that basic thing because I like to bust them speak. Cause okay, so let's do this. Let's do uh, like five, six. I'm gonna do a rap. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my palace. Uh -huh. Champagne in my chalice. I got it all covered like a wedding band. Wonderland, so my alias is Alice. And we gonna start a motherfucking pussy ride. Oh, we gon' have to put them on a pussy diet. Look at that, I guarantee I got them quiet. Look at that, I guarantee they all inspired. A-Town made it out there. Straight out Kansas City, yeah, we made it out there. Celebrated, graduated, made it past fail. Sassy, classy, Kool-Aid with the kale. Mama was a key, she was cleaning the hotel. Mama was a driver, I was working retail. Uh, they kept us in the back of the stove. We ain't hitting no more. Grammys, woo! I probably give a Tony to the homie. I probably get an Emmy dedicated to the Holly Melanated. Hey, uh, uh, the art Android orchestrated. Uh, yeah, we Holly Melanated. Ah, uh, art Android orchestrated. Hey. You are beautiful. That was, that was what we needed to do. That's what I. That's what you needed. You came with with the hip hop. We needed to get it in. You're wow. so talented, dude. Like, take take me with you. Take me with you. You were so sweet. Well, you gonna go viral with this. So, oh, oh, yeah. she about to post. So go ahead, y'all. Make sure y'all post that everywhere. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Being in your presence. I actually, it's me it's being so in your presence. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, this is a little song I wrote. Okay. You know, um, it's called Respect. Okay. To put some respect on my name. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Right. What's your name? What's your name? Oh, all right. My name is Autumn Rogers. Everybody, Autumn. give it up for Autumn Rogers. Hey. Woo -woo. Okay. <clears throat> you're supposed to go straight into it. I don't know. You're right. You're right. I just got a little nervous. Thank but it's okay. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Tired of your lies. Your alibis. Stop trying to run game. And put some respect on my name. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I had to be delusional to think you was in control and you put some type of spell on me. Must have been going insane and really it's me to blame to think we was one and the same. Do you care what you did? Did you see what you did? Did you really think what you did saw fit? Do you care if you hurt me? Was it all worth it? You really was touch me, so it wasn't working. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, Give it up for Autumn. Autumn with the come through, come through. Yes, you wrote that too. You are very talented. You have a beautiful tone, and I think that you you got you got something going on. I'm not a judge. I'm not Simon Cowell or anything. But uh, yeah, I love that you 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 you're special. And and keep going. Did you produce it already? Is like, do you have it on a CD? You haven't recorded it yet. 
Yes, I did have a recorded, and I have the music video out on YouTube. Okay, well tell everybody right now where we can go see it. Okay, my YouTube is Autumn Rogers. Okay. Autumn Rogers is A U T U M N, like the season. Rogers, R O G E R S. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at official Autumn Rogers and Twitter at official A Rogers as well. Let's shoot your shot. Shoot your shot, sweetheart. And you never know. We might actually do something together. You never know. You never know. I think it would be probably to just live in the present more. You know, not be so worried about the future and worried about mistakes, but to really be present and don't miss these moments. Like these are the moments you don't get to, life is not a rehearsal. You don't get to redo, you know, many of, many of the things that we take for granted. And I think that's what I would do. I'd be like, just be patient with yourself. You might not get it right. Perfection is a lie. Do the best that you can. Have the best inten you know, the intentions. Make sure you tell the people that you love and that you know love you, that you love them. Forgive faster because holding on to, you know, your mistakes or, or holding on to something that someone did to you causes you more pain than you really need to be experiencing. So I would say a lot of shit. Um, yeah, I would, I would say a lot of things. But I, I think I wouldn't desire to do that because I wouldn't be the person that I am today mm -hmm. if I had not gone through what I've gone through. You know what I'm saying? So. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes, darling. Um, my name is Ashley, and it's a pleasure to be here with you um, at this moment. Um, so my question, I guess the comment kind of question is, so at an early kind of age, I learned my gift as like, being able to kind of like read people's demeanors and just different things that they're experiencing. Like I can see trouble on someone. I can see like when people are just dealing with certain things. So anyway, mm -hmm. as I've gotten older, um, people have always like come to me for so much advice or just, you know, just to get insight or wisdom. Right. And so like I personally um, have seen how uh, a lot of people in the industry, music industry, um, so to speak, have so many, and we all do, but like it seems like people that have certain talents, more so like music or artistry, they have these real demons that they deal with, and they they don't know how to open up and and talk about those things. But I know that those things are what help them to be the great people that they are. But somehow, a lot of times, those things also consume them, and they fall into not being the greatest that they could be. Um, so how how do you think as for me that I could market myself to like be able to get to those people? Like it's like you see so much greatness and you know the capabilities of, of a lot of people, even just regular, not to say celebrities, so to speak, but everyone, but on the celebrity level. Like how could you make yourself marketable to that industry? So, well, how do you, what do you define? Are you like a life coach or a, is that? I am a certified life coach. You're a certified life, so you're saying how do you become a celebrity certified certified life coach? Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't have that answer, but I definitely think that every. Because I know there's like a lot of trust and confidentiality. Yeah. I think it's hard. It's harder for artists to just trust complete strangers with their exactly. most vulnerable. Exactly. Yeah, like I, I think that that's true. Me included. Um, so I think I think that you know if you find one artist or somebody like here, you live in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, because sometimes word of mouth hel helps. You know, like if you were working with somebody. I don't know. I don't think I feel qualified enough to give you this information. <laughs> I really don't, and I don't want to. I don't want to steer you in the wrong. Got a therapist or whatever. Well, it was, I, I'm with the same therapist since before I got famous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, you know, we kind of have our thing. Um, but I think, I mean, people, you can do non-disclosure agreements, and you know that can work too. Um, yeah, I think it's just kind of word of mouth and. 
developing, helping develop new artists too? Because sometimes it's not always the established artists that need help. It's the new artists that are coming in. And I think that there's, there are always new artists who are getting developed who may be about to sign a deal. So maybe, oh, I have one, I have one idea. Maybe talk to record labels because as they're bringing in new artists, Artists are going through things all the time, and sometimes if you have relationships with certain people at the label, then they can refer that artist to you. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, so because they refer, um, like if someone's having a crisis, like they say something crazy online, you can, have, you can talk to a publicist or you can talk to a, a damage control person. Thank God I have never had to use, I'm knocking on linen, wood, everything. I haven't had those experiences, but there are people that the label and management and, you know, they'll say, okay, you need to talk to this person to coach you through how you deal with these questions and things like that. So, you know, it's out there. It's just about making sure that they know you're available and you're in touch with, like, the right people. So I think going to record labels might be, like, the best bet. Music conferences is good. Music conferences, yeah. Go ahead. I'm in the music business, too, so music and also... I don't remember you from a long time. You know, that's a wonderful thing. Being here today, and it's seven degrees of separation. There's so many people in here that can help you get to where you need to be because we all in all walks of life. So just reach out because... You might need to just deal with a regular person first. Of course. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. process like. It varies. Um, right some of the songs on my album I wrote in like two days. Mm -hmm. I have a song called Americans that I wrote like very fast. It's on the album. Um, Dirty Computer, the title track, which is on the album I wrote that really fast. Um, I collaborate too. Like I don't do it, you know, all just by myself sometimes. Um, like on Make Me Feel, I worked with a few writers and, and you know, I co-wrote. Um, it's a great video, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it just depends. Some things are in my heart and it's like nobody can write this except for me. Like I'm just like, I'm going to take the time. It may take me months, sometimes years. I can redraft a song. Um, and then... Huh? Don't throw anything away. No, I don't throw nothing away. You got backup hard drives with all, you know, songs. So you got songs that got a verse and a hook but no bridge. Yeah, exactly. You might have it. You're like, oh my goodness, I'm listening to this voice memo that I had in 2015. Right. Right? And you're like, this is a song. Yeah. So I would encourage anybody, if you're writing songs, to go through if you're like me. Like, I wake up in the middle of the night yeah. with ideas and dreams and all these things with melodies and stuff. And, um, just make sure you, back, first of all, back up your phone. Yes. And then, you know what I'm talking about, Robert. Put it on the computer or whatever and listen to your old, old, old things because you'll be surprised at what you will find. And you'll be like, I was sleeping on that song. Or, you know. In my sleep. Yeah. Wake up trying to. Wake up. Yeah, Record them. Yeah. Go back to sleep. But then take every month, maybe, or every two months, whatever, you know, the time time is you want to pass for you for, for you to have listened to it, just listen to them and you will be surprised at how fast you may write the song too.